Hello students, good evening to all of you. Today we will see the syllabus of paper one. As you know, so anyway, I will give brief the pattern of optional. So I am assuming that you are very beginners and you do not have idea about how optional papers are given, how many papers are there, what is the paper total marks. So I am giving you brief idea about that. History, optional. In previous classes, we have seen the mains pattern. What is the mains pattern? There are two types of question papers. One set is only taken for qualification, Indian language and other English. The second part is which the marks are taken for the merit count seven such papers. So total nine papers in mains. Out of nine, two are qualifying, seven are counted for the merit. Those marks are very important for getting the rank. Out of these seven, first one essay, later four are general studies, last two are optionals. It contains paper one and paper two. Two papers are there. Each paper contains questions of 250 marks. Paper two also, 250 marks. And in the previous class, we have seen that the total score which top ranker, last year top ranker from history optional. She got out of 250, 150. That means 60% of the score in paper one. More than 60% of the score in paper two. So these are the scores of topper. So 300 plus combining optional paper. 300 plus often used to come in history optional. But on an average, most of the students used to get around 250, 260. If you are like, if you attempt all the questions, if you do not miss anything, and map also, you are not that strong, whatever you know, you will be able to write. So at very decent preparation, also you can get 250, 260. Because more or less, the questions are static, and you can write, you can whatever you have prepared, you can relate the question and you can give the better answer. But from 260 to 300, these 40 marks, it appears 40 marks, huge. But if you divide those 40 marks, suppose 260 means 130, 130. If you are decent enough, if you read the entire syllabus, you do not miss any important parts, you will get, even if the papers are difficult, even if papers are difficult, still you can manage if you do not mess up with the map, because map is the very crucial part. 130, 130. Now you divide. Another 50 marks are there. Those 50 marks don't see as very big one. You split those 50 marks, 25 here, 25 here. So I'm assuming 250, 260 is a decent score. But now to reach the top score, 300 plus score, you need 25 here, 25 here. In this way, you need to see. So 25, you have five questions in each paper. Here also, five questions in each paper. That means in paper one, you have five questions. Extra marks you need to get five. If you consider 
फाइव क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी फाइव मार्क्स मीन फाइव मार्क्स इन ईच पे ईच क्वेश्चन हियर ऑल्सो ईच क्वेश्चन फाइव मार्क्स ईच क्वेश्चन बट अगेन ईच क्वेश्चन विल कंटेन ए बी सी लाइक वाइज सिंगल क्वेश्चन मीन्स इट इज नॉट ए डायरेक्ट वन ए बी सी लाइक दैट वेन इट कम्स टू पेपर वन यू हैव मैप If you can manage in every question, this is one question. In one question, you need five marks. If you can manage to get one point five, one point five, one point five extra, then you reach five. So five and half. Here also, if you can manage that way, you can. Here map is there. I assume to get two sixty score, two fifty score. that means map you might have got around 20 marks but still if you prepare well it can just a single question will change your life itself maximum up to 20 extra marks also you can get extra 10 marks also possible single question 10 marks 15 marks 20 marks extra from whatever you are already getting this way you need to see when you want to reach that top scores upsc more or less when it comes to history question static current affairs also not mixed that's why history is one of the safest optional to get average scores but to reach the high scores little bit extra effort is required and this little extra effort also you need to see in each and every question if you split the goals if you see entire goal extra you need 50 or 60 marks if you see that goal it appears very big but if you split that goal into paper 1 you need 30 let us assume 30 here you need here you need 30 marks if you see that way now your burden little bit came down now in that 30 marks also each and every question carries little bit so one one question one mark extra one and half mark extra this one and half one mark two mark extra without much evidence without much map markings also you can get a 250 260 but if you write some historian names evidence when it comes to paper 1 evidence with the places geographical locations if question is about art and culture you bring as many locations as possible about the art and culture painting suppose if the question is about painting you try to give as many locations as possible where paintings are identified where paintings are discovered and if it is about a temple architecture you give as many examples as possible the more you give examples automatically in each and every question you will get that extra one and of mark two marks extra so this is how you can score 300 plus easily this is the approach you require when it comes to reaching the high scores in history optional this is one aspect we need to see before analyzing what is the exact syllabus in today's class we will see about paper 1 250 marks in next class we will see about paper 2 this is the paper 1 broadly if we divide paper 1 it has two parts one is ancient india another one is medieval india one part is ancient india second part is medieval india now i will show you the syllabus also total it contains 2 this is the notification whatever you see here this is the pdf directly given by the upsc itself upsc mentions 
पेपर वन हिस्ट्री पेपर वन फर्स्ट वन सोर्सेस सेकंड वन प्री हिस्ट्री प्रोटो हिस्ट्री इन प्रीवियस क्लास आई टोल्ड इफ यू सी द नोटिफिकेशन outward appearance it looks like very big because it is clearly given now if i show in a simple crux format now you see this is what total paper 1 syllabus i did not take any detailed one sources prehistory indus valley megalithic aryan mahajanapadas mauryans post mauryans guptas post guptas only 12 lines but if you elaborate now if upsc simply leaves like this if just it mentions only 12 and if it doesn't mention what is there exactly inside then it is going to be really very big because we how to interpret what are there what are the topics are there in indus valley civilization and there is no boundary then we will keep running after the books we will keep on reading one or few topics most of the books this is where you need to see how you have to look at upsc pattern very clearly it defines this is the first chapter look at whatever you consider first chapter or first unit sources clearly mentions archaeological sources literary sources foreign accounts simply it mention greek chinese arab writers if you read about greek chinese arab writers and important points if you write a short notes so that short notes is very important before the examination you can go through important facts after reading the entire syllabus you can easily write any type of question only when it comes to evidence you need to revise before the examination so that you can remember some important facts otherwise our brain will miss some of the facts most important facts also sometimes our brain will not remember out of anxiousness in the class in the examination that's why before exam you should have some kind of reference material or just facts short notes so that you can fastly get the facts before exam if you pick up the facts story you can always narrate that extra evidence only will give you the extra edge sources now while you are preparing also archaeological sources just to follow this one after the other once you read it finish you read it you see the previous year questions once you see the previous year questions you will get complete idea how questions are coming on sources you do all the previous year questions you have you read all the parts which are given that's it once for all your preparation on sources is done now nothing to create anything extra additionals also won't require current affair suppose unless if there is any major breakthrough in the archaeological evidence questions and even if such kind of breakthrough comes that kind of breakthrough might inspire the upsc to give static question only if you quote that current affairs fine even if you do not mention that current development also with the static content you can write that's why upsc history optional is one of the safest optional with respect to current affairs part nothing to worry about whatever current developments anyway you are going to read as part of general studies whatever current affairs you are going to get in general studies in general you have to write mains contains other papers also whatever information you get there that is enough to handle if there is any question with respect to current events if there is if at all there is more most of the time there won't be any current issues that's why once you prepare 100% your preparation is done on this chapter likewise second prehistory and proto history so likewise 
एंशंट इंडिया इन एंशंट इंडिया क्वेश्चन विल कम फ्रॉम सेक्शन ए सेक्शन ए ऑफ पेपर वन कंटेन्स एंशंट इंडिया एंड सेक्शन बी कंटेन्स क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम एर्ली मेडेवल एंड मेडेवल पार्ट दिस इज ब्रॉड इन सिलेबस ट्वेल्व आइटम्स आर हियर now you can see there are 12 items here 12 items there 12 chapters and 12 chapters so here 12 chapters and here we have 12 chapters so if you read 12 chapters here your ancient part is done if you read other 12 chapters medieval india done no current affairs complete static once you prepare your preparation for paper 1 is done and in each and every chapter what should be read clearly upsc mention in sources you need not to think much about what is there in sources already upsc clearly mentioned it wants to know archaeological sources literary sources everything like that aryan mahajanapada mauryan empire post mauryan likewise this part is done ancient india section a contains 12 chapters medieval india section b contains 12 chapters questions will come now totally eight questions will come in this part four questions in this part four questions and here 1 2 3 4 and here 5 6 7 8 eight questions this first question is going to be the map in paper 1 first question is map fifth question contains 1 2 3 4 five sub questions a b c d e five sub questions in question number 5 question number 1 contains map let us go to this i will show you how questions are also coming in 2022 paper now i am saying i am taking this now this is how upsc paper looks question paper in the front instructions will be given you can see history paper 1 question paper specific instructions upsc clearly mentions this first question this fifth question compulsory you cannot miss total out of 5 out of 8 you need to answer five questions that is why five questions each question is for 15 marks total 250 marks out of these eight you have to write five again upsc gives instructions you cannot simply pick up here four are there there four are there out of eight you can pick up any three any five you cannot first one compulsory fifth one compulsory so that means out of these five one and fifth should be definitely there in those five questions that instruction comes question number 1 and 5 are compulsory you can see this instruction clearly says question number 1 and 5 are compulsory and out of the remaining three already two are done now you have to write only three out of three are to be attempted choosing at least one question from each section you see the instruction at least one question from each section that means out of 2 3 
out of two, three, four, at least one. One should be there. Out of six, seven, eight, at least one should be there. Remaining three questions are there. If you are comfortable with all two, three, four, suppose what happens? It happens to many students. Some students are very much comfortable in ancient India. Some students are very much comfortable in medieval India. If there is no such instruction, what happens? Those who are very much comfortable in medieval India, they pick up all the rest of the three questions from there and they will not touch ancient at all. In ancient India, only, suppose if there is no such instruction, what happens? Map is compulsory. In ancient India, you will just prepare map and you will leave less rest of the things because you are already determined that only in medieval India you are going to write answers. So literally, if there is no such instruction, you are making the optional into only one paper. Two papers are there. In each end, each paper, section A, section B, paper two also, section A, section B, but you are already planned that one section you are going to leave completely. That means only one section in paper one and one section in paper two. Only with the two parts you can manage the optional if there is no such instruction. But here, UPSC, very clear. It expects us that you should read ancient India. It expects definitely that you have to read medieval India. Otherwise, you will not get the score. That is exactly that is the reason why one instruction is given. One question definitely you have to pick up. That means you cannot skip ancient India at all. Similarly, you have to pick up one question definitely from medieval India, apart from these five, fifth question. That is why you have to be comfortable in both ancient as well as medieval India. And one more question is there. Now, one, five, compulsory. Two, three, four, one compulsory. Six, seven, eight, one compulsory. Now, four came. Now, that extra one question, you can select either from here or from there. If you are comfortable in ancient, you pick up. That means you are going to write three questions if you are comfortable in ancient India. Two questions from medieval India. If you are comfortable in ancient India more. Suppose if you are comfortable more in medieval India, three questions you will write here, two questions you will write here. But definitely two here, two here, you cannot do anything, you have to write. This is the instruction clearly UPSC gave. Question number one and five are compulsory, and out of the remaining, three are to be attempted, choosing at least one question from each section. The number of marks carried by a question are parties indicated against it. Word limit in questions, wherever specified, should be added to. Word limit in some questions, it is not. Word limit will not be given in every part. I will show you the questions also. Now you see section A. Section A, question number one, contains map. This is how maps welcome. If I go here, I'm taking another sheet. Map. Question number one. This question number one, map. This is for 50 marks. Out of 50 marks, it is not single question. It is divided into and so on up to 20 map markings. One, two, three, and so on. 20. Each map contains two and a half mark. So two and a half mark and into 20, that is 50 marks. Total 50 marks. It's not a single question. You will have 20 map sites. Each carries 2.5 total. Now you see, it is saying first one, Paleolithic site. Mesolithic with burials. Neolithic pit dwelling. Early village settlement. Neolithic. 
नियोलिथिक चालकोलिथिक हरप्पन मेगालिथिक सेकंड संगम शैतवाहना कैपिटल लाइकवाइज टोटल ट्वेंटी एर्लीस्ट चैत्य गृह टोटल ट्वेंटी दिस इज हाउ मैप विल बी गिवेन दिस मैप इज गिवेन एंड ऑन मैप मार्किंग्स आर देयर वन टू थ्री लाइक दैट ऑल द ट्वेंटी आर गिवेन सो नाउ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू राइट इन क्वेश्चन कम आंसर बुकलेट यू विल बी गिवेन बुकलेट दैट बुकलेट कंटेन्स questions and space is left suppose question number 1 whatever here question says what it is saying for example you take earliest chaitya griha so earliest chaitya griha suppose this is 20th space is left likewise here whatever space is given to you you have to write only in that specified you cannot cross this boundary because it will be another question earliest chaitya then you have to write few words total 30 words because it is given instruction is clearly given identify the following places mark on the map supplied to you write a short note of about 30 words on each of them in your question come answer booklet 30 words first instruction wherever word limit is there you should strictly follow that and anyway space is given to you that's why you need not to worry in that space maximum 30 it will be plus or minus 2 3 words nothing to worry about that extra plus or minus 2 3 words around 30 words only that spaces will be given you can freely write this is how suppose if you match it correctly earliest chaitya griha where it is suppose 20th then you go to 20 so 20 is located near maharashtra so maharashtra contains so many caves since ancient times many caves were carved in maharashtra because maharashtra is containing western gods in these western gods one of the reasons is western gods second one is this is near to the coastal area from nadran uttarapada and dakshinapada they were connected during ancient times trade and transportation was always linked between north and south and this deccan through deccan north and south are connected and this is also the western side western ports are also important when it comes to the trading activities with the outside world that is why so many trading activities used to take place in the western ghats of maharashtra region that is why so many these merchants traders they patronized buddhism chaitya griha means it is related to buddhism these buddhist caves you will identify in maharashtra western ghats region you have n number of examples like ajanta caves are there then karla kanheri nashik caves junnar caves so many examples are there now you need to identify somewhere near to Bum, mumbai what is the chaitya griha so you can just identify once you are preparing for map marking you will easily identify what are there what chaitya grahas are there in this karla kanheri junnar so near to that area whatever is available you need to pick up then you write karla then 1 2 3 30 words that's it likewise if you identify the right one you will get one mark if you write 30 words suppose after reading this much writing 30 words is not at all a challenge only when it comes to map identifying the correct marking only matter once you identify exactly then you will write 30 words this is 1.5 marks one font 5 mark total 2.5 mark 
you can see here one observation 100% score in math if you write 100% score is possible it appears very small number but this is going to make huge difference suppose if you can you may not be able to recognize all the 20 sites let us assume you are very strong in 15 sites only i am assuming 16 sites for calculation purpose if you can write 16 questions that means you are very strong in map and even after becoming that much strong also still four map markings you don't know 16 you know very well then if you can manage write 30 words best words 16 questions 16 marks then one and a half mark for everything suppose if i assume you get two marks in 16 questions that means how much 32 so out of 50 32 marks for the same question in theory not map out of 50 if you get 30 very very good score very high score when it comes to map you still you have some more marks potential is there it is not the upper limit that is what when it comes to theory part a b c suppose Suppose if second question is there. Now you see, second question is given. This question is for 20 marks. This question for 15, 15. If we get 50% of the score, that means here you get 10 marks, 7 and a half, 7 and a half. 50% means that is one of the better scores. Potential is there to go to 30%, uh, 60% also. Here, 12 and, 12 and a half, 9 marks, 9 marks. After getting 60% of the marks in ABC, still you will manage to get 30 marks. But when it comes to map marking, if you are good in 16 questions, you already crossed 32. Still, I assume only one mark for your data. If you identify 16, right? 16 marks. And if you cannot manage 1.5 mark, one mark only, still you get that. And it is not always that you get one mark in everywhere. Some questions you will get 5.5 also. So if you assume 10 questions, 10 marks like another 5 marks, that means 37 marks. Now you see, 37. So reaching up to 37, 38, 40 marks also, And sometimes the map markings are going to be very easy. Sometimes you can mark 18 questions also. So 18 questions, then 40 you will reach. At least 30 plus always will be there. Decent map marking, unless you are completely clueless. 30 plus marks in map, 60% there itself. In other parts also, if you manage to get 60%, that means 150 out of 250 marks. 150 in paper 1, 150 in paper 2, 300, 300 plus. So map is one crucial part you cannot miss to get very high scores. It is not always that you will get 60% in the theory part. Whenever, so that cushion will be there when it comes to the map marking. So if you get 80% score in map, then even if some of the theory parts, if you get only 55, still you can manage average 60%. This is how paper one, like this map will be given, markings will be given, you need to identify it, get the right one, 30 words, task is done. Second one, second question contains like this. It contains three parts, A, B, C. 
section A contains this question. Section A is about ancient India. So second question talks about urban character of Harappan civilization. Harappan civilization, foreign accounts as a source of ancient Indian history, sources. Though some of the ideas of Buddhism may have had Buddhism and Jainism. Now once you pick up, here second question means A, B, C, all the three you need to write. You will be given space here. In question come answer booklet, you will be given 2A, like this, whatever we have seen, urban, Two A will be given urban character of Harappan, then space will be left. Complete space will be given to you. If it is 15 mark, little space, 20 mark, more space will be given. Now you need to start writing by giving introduction. You need not to always give the headings like this also, introduction, body, conclusion. For understanding purpose, when we are teaching, we teach like this. But here, when it comes to your answers, you need not to write like introduction, body, conclusion like that. Just you can start beginning introduction. Then if question is talking about reasons, then you can give the subheading reasons, then impact, then write. So if you well present, then if it has potential to give the map, so then give the map also. Give very good map. So map also, so that you can map markings, you can give. Wherever micro diagrams are required, you draw it. Wherever possible, you can draw it. Again, it should be very balanced one. Wherever it gives extra marks to you, you can use these extra additions. Your main focus should be on answering the question, the content part. The presentation, also very, very important. In presentation, like subheadings like this, and micro diagrams, wherever necessary. Your entire space should not be covered with the micro map, mind map itself. Otherwise, entire content will become less. Based on that, if you write out of 20 marks, this question is for 20 marks, If you address the question without much evidence, much mi micro diagrams, mind maps, you can, if you address the question, you will get 10 marks. That means 50% of the score. If you address the question, if you address all the parts, if you do not leave any part, all the parts, if you address like this, you will be given 50%. But if you have some more additionals, some more evidence, Without evidence also, you can write history answer, but that becomes your general studies answer. This makes difference from, in general studies also, you have history. Same Harappan question can be asked in general studies also. Without much evidence, still you can make the answer. But to give some evidence, you need to have some extra effort when it comes to the history, optional. This is where, if you are good in map, the map, while you are preparing for map itself, this evidence automatically taken, taken care. If you give more evidence and some historian names, some archeologist names, if you add those extra facts, then you will get 12.5. 13 also, if you present very well. That means it is more than 60%. So this is how you need to score in each and every section, every question. Now 2A done. Now second question, 2B. When it comes to 2B, again, foreign accounts as a source of ancient Indian history may have some advantage, but also have few shortcomings. Citing appropriate examples, examine the statement. Now, UPSC itself mentioned citing appropriate examples, foreign sources. 
when question is coming like this particularly if examiner is asking about examples don't miss examples you give as many examples as possible foreign accounts now here you can see in our syllabus paper 1 sources foreign account greek chinese arab writers clearly mentioned so you take greek sources chinese sources arab sources so greek chinese arab travelers this is about ancient india question is about ancient india so focus on ancient part so right important authors important authors important authors so you will get good score if you can manage so likewise you have to think more evidence then you will get now here this question is for how many marks 15 15 means you will be given less space here this is for 20 mark more space will be given to you you can write freely this is for 15 mark less than 20 mark space you will be given still 50% if you address the question 50% if you give more evidence 8 and off 9 9 and off so depending on your presentation levels number of examples you cite in the answer this is how every answer same is the case with the next question space will be given you need to write it here suppose if you pick up second question you need to definitely write a also b also c also you cannot take only suppose here three questions are there you might be comfortable in arappa question one comfortable then foreign accounts also comfortable but here buddhism jainism mixing with upanishadic thought if you are not comfortable with the philosophical aspects you cannot miss this and you cannot compensate this question with some other question no because you have already selected question number 2 here selection means it is not about a b c selection it is about this part so once you choose second question as your choice then you are forced you cannot do anything otherwise your effort goes waste you will be getting marks maybe good marks also but here 50% seven and of mark you will lose completely if you do not touch it this kind of mistake should not take place that means c also to c also this also should be attempted this also should be attempted this also should be attempted that is how second if you select second question then if you go to third question same if you select a third then you have to write all a b c whether you are comfortable or not upsc don't care once you have select third question means upsc expect best answers from all the subsections of that question number guptas ashoka maurya and art and culture question number 4 evaluate important tripartite struggle for the domination of north india throw light on chief characters of tamil bhakti movement Kalhanas Rajatarangini is the best example of history writing tradition in early India discuss that part now section b fifth one is compulsory you cannot do anything number of words are also given 150 you need not to give that much attention or worry about these 150 words because space is given to you and around 150 140 150 you will easily get and you can and if you want to write more also you will not be able to write once fifth is compulsory once you have started writing fifth question then 5a question will be given space will be given to you then 150 words in this space you have to write same is the case with b c d and e also 
once you start writing 5a, 5b, 5c, 5d, 5e, all should be attempted. You cannot miss it. You have to attempt all the five. Otherwise, if you do not attempt them, only with three questions, you will lose here whatever marks you are going to get. Five questions. Now, this, it mix with the early medieval part and with the medieval. Iltutmish, Mughals, Maratha, Allahuddin Kilji. So, 6A. Sixth question, similar. Now, 15, 15, 20. Space will be given to you. Nothing to worry about uh, these marks also. Just you need to have some idea that this question is for 15 mark, this question is for 20 mark, so that while you are planning introduction, body, conclusion, because you have given the space, space is a resource, you have to utilize that resource very systematically, so that if you have some idea that this is for 15 marks, you are going to write less number of words, and accordingly you can use that space properly, that how many words you should give for introduction, how many words for conclusion and remaining for the body and in body also properly. Every part of the question should be understood and it has to be addressed. It is like same. Once you select a sixth question, A, B, C should be done. If you select a six A, once you start writing, you have to address all the parts of the question. You cannot miss any part. One part, if you write more and if you leave the other part, you will not get full score you'll get half score only. Likewise, you should be, while you are starting the answer, read very carefully, read multiple times, underline and mark properly about how many sentences are there, how many phrases are there, and also think before you start answering that, how you can connect various parts in the answer. Connection is all very, very crucial when it comes to the main answer writing. This skill you have to develop gradually over a period of time. By writing so many tests, by writing so many answers, you will definitely achieve that particular goal. That's not a big issue. Seven A, then eight. Likewise, total number of questions, eight are there. Out of eight, you have to write definitely first question map, second question A, B, C, D, E, compulsory. And now, definitely from 6, 7, 8. 6, 7, 8. Definitely you have to pick up one. Suppose if you are not comfortable with, here most of the time what happens with respect to selection is, we may not be comfortable with all the three parts. We will be comfortable in first question, second question, in sixth. We might be very much comfortable with one or two questions in seventh. And again, same is the problem with the eighth question. Now here, dilemma comes. You have to, you are not comfortable with one of the questions in each and every question. Now, you have to select two questions or one question, what should be done? You select whatever best you can give. Suppose if you have selected eighth question, you ensure that those two questions, whatever you are comfortable, you should get maximum score. So it is like, suppose if you get 20, if you take, out of 20, you should get uh, 12 and a half, 13 marks. So that whatever, one mark, two mark, you are going to lose in the question where you are not comfortable, at least that will be compensated. So wherever you are strong, try to get the maximum score. So that wherever you are little bit weaker, that marks can be compensated. Be very strong in map. Because their map, you have 80% of cushion. If you can score that maximum, wherever you are a little bit uncomfortable here, that marks will be compensated. So that 60% of the score you should be able to get. So at least 280 above, you should be there to get very good rank. So 280, 290, it will give you very good rank. So 300 plus, you will be one of the toppers. Top 10 list also in the optional and provided you are good in general studies and essay also. So when you want to reach the top slot, every part of mains should be clicked. And in interview also, you should get very good score. It should be above 170, 160, above. If you get good score in mains itself, even if in interview, if 10 marks, 5 marks less, 
than the top score, still you will get good rank. That is how you have to handle paper one. This is the way you need to look at paper one. Map is very, very crucial part. Map is going to be very, very crucial part. Don't miss that opportunity. This is the syllabus for each and every part. Clearly, it mentions themes in early culture. So more or less up to 12 units. Section A, you will see, from 13 onwards, early medieval. So this section, particularly these 13 and 14 chapters, sometimes Twelve chapters, twelve chapters here. This thirteenth one and fourteenth one. This is like transition. Definitely, first twelve will come in section A. From fifteenth onwards, you will definitely see in section B. But this thirteenth and fourteenth chapter, sometime one question will be coming coming here. One question will come here. That's why. This also, this transition phase we call early medieval period. You should not miss. You should be, if you are very comfortable, it will not make you troublesome. Otherwise, these questions will <coughs> confuse the student which question should be picked up. You are very much comfortable up to 12 chapters, but 13, 14, a little bit uh, not clear. Still, you are forced to write, you will lose the score. That's why. 13th, 14th, particularly those which are on the border, that should be very, very properly understood, properly prepared. Ancient India, section A, medieval India, section B. If you divide into number of chapters here, this is how sources, themes in early Indian cultural history, early medieval India, cultural traditions in India, so from 13, 14, 15 onwards up to 12, 50, 50, you can change. 12 questions, 12 chapters here, 12 chapters there. You can have proper idea about, this is about section A. This is about section B. Here, four questions. Here four questions and in four questions map is one question and here fifth one a b c d e these five questions upsc give in such a way that different parts in first two three chapters question number one in the middle two questions in the end one or two questions this is the strategy of upsc that you should not leave any particular chapter, whether you are comfortable or not, you are required to, you are expected to read so that wherever compulsory questions are there, you will not miss the opportunity or you will not miss the score. That's why each and every chapter is important. UPSC design the questions in such a way that it expects you to write almost on every chapter answer so that UPSC can judge you better that you have better idea about ancient India, you have better idea about medieval India. This is the way looking at the syllabus of paper one, how questions are asked in paper one, how you need to select the questions from paper one, and importance of map, and importance of reading every chapter. All right, here we will stop this class. Here we have learned about how to handle paper one and how the paper UPSC is giving the paper one, how it is designing the questions and how UPSC force every student to read all the chapters in paper one. All right, here we will stop. Thank you very much. We will come, we will meet in the next class with the paper two also like this and in and some other classes, I will explain the 
sequence of events in a chronological way so that you will have better idea about how to think about ancient how to think about modern how to think about old history so likewise we will go one after the other step by step please go through the previous videos you will get better idea about if you are very beginner you will have better idea about how mains papers are designed what is the weightage of optionals and how important optional score is to get top rank all right thank you very much we'll meet in the next class thank you